Hey, um, hello everyone. We are now on the Stegger podcast, and um, we have new offices, um, the new offices, new problems, but uh, we thank God that we are now online. Uh, and uh, I, I, I am with the. Uh, I don't know why I thought about the wrong word, but <laughs> but I'm I'm with Mr. Mays, <laughs> Techno King, the, the Techno King. <laughs> How are you, Mr. The Mays? Techno King. <laughs> What's up, man? How are you doing? I'm good, good, good. good. It's, been, it's been it's been a while. It's been, it's been a while, like yeah. A, I mean, since the man got married, you know, he he, <laughs> does, he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. So it's like a, it's one of those. But I, I understand. Yeah, but I I, but, but I, I mean, um, I always try to to make time that for us to to sit down, and um, uh, and chat, and I enjoyed the last uh, conversation we had. Uh, yeah, I don't know if maybe the things that were said there are privileged. Uh, I would want to share some of the stuff that were shared there uh, because uh, they are dear to me. Um, um, so uh, I will always want to have a. A, a private conversation uh, besides having to talk here on uh, on the podcast but uh, yeah it's been a long time um how's how's everything going <laughs> i mean life is life is great you know you know you know what i was thinking about um, i'm gonna put you on the spot here but uh i was thinking about um i was thinking about your wedding actually oh yes you know and yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and I, I, I was thinking about uh i mean i think there was th- there was a moment when you know you uh, with the moment when you, when you cried, <laughs> and, I, and I was just thinking, you know, yeah, you know what was going through your what was going through your mind when yeah. when that happened. What was you know what was what was going through your mind? What 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 were you, what were you thinking about? Okay, uh, I mean that uh, that 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 moment was um, was okay. So the the part where I was crying, just to give context, was uh, you know after a wedding, you always have to kind of like respond to to everything right so so what I, what was happening there was just giving speeches they thanking everyone who has come uh, from far from near and I got to a point where I had to 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 speak about the significant people in my life and uh, one of them is uh, John Mazanga uh, so when I go to that part when I said uh, I remember the, the speech very well that part where I said uh, men are made by men um so what what basically what i meant there is uh you you can't you can't really uh self make yourself yeah without having people who who speak into you and just give you a, a, a bigger compass those who have went ahead of you and kind of like give you a compass so uh, for me it was just uh it was just realizing the the impact that you have had in my life and for me it was like okay yeah it's it's something that brings brings it close to my heart and then because like i was saying earlier that it it means a lot to to meet people who think differently and they are just uh, light years ahead of you and when you see the impact that they've done from the time you met and um, until now you 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 just it's it, it's that moment when people say that when when you die you your life just flashes <laughs> yeah, yeah in in front of you so it was it was for me for me it was that point to say that like, you know what uh, I feel like I'm I've been taken care of well and my future is is guaranteed in a sense that yeah, uh, yeah, because yeah, I'm yeah. I'm running uh, I'm being mentored by by these two amazing men yeah I mean it's actually quite interesting I was I was I was thinking about that, and I was I was wondering what was actually going through your yeah. through your mind, mm. and um, and it's like it's like quite quite fascinating, you know. You t- you you're talking about the people that have sort of gone after you, you know, the people that have like you know experienced a bit of bit of life mm. um, ahead of you, and you know, probably learned a little bit from from history and from um you know what has happened and they're like you know opening opening up a way for you so that mm-hmm. when you when you move on it's like okay cool you know i've i've been there don't don't walk there you know you know i've i've seen that 
you know don't 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 move in that direction and i think that's you know that sort of speaks to uh, i want to read something now oh yeah sure because <laughs> i've, I've yeah. been <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been reading this i've been reading this book mm-hmm. uh it's called a, a lessons of history yeah by by will durand okay so they there's like a bigger book to this but this is like um a very a smaller version of it so he basically goes on and summarizes them the whole book and like a you know a couple of hundred of pages and i was listening to um, ray dalio okay and uh, i don't know i don't know what's that so ray dalio is uh the ceo of bridgewater is some other billionaire but he's like yeah i read a couple of his books back okay. in the day yeah in a book called uh principles which is like one of my favorite books okay um and I mean, he is, he's a guy that has sort of made it like from, you know, from just, you know, a, the, the garage back in the day. And yeah. he became like a, a big, a big master in, in, in the trading, the trading world. Okay. So he's like, he's like really great. So when I, had, when I heard him talk about, you know, this, um, this book, I just thought, you know what, it's hundred, un, hundreds of pages let me just uh, go through it mm-hmm. and just read it maybe you know m- i might I might get something out of there yeah so um, so the book is uh, it's called the lessons of history by by wood Durant. Uh, i'll just read a big uh, of the first part which is like the the introduction yeah so he says um as his studies come to a close the historian faces the challenge of what use have your studies been? Have you found in your work only the amusement of recounting the rise and fall of nations and ideas and retelling said stories of the death of kings? Have you learnt about human nature than the man in the street can learn without so much as opening a book? Have you derived from history that any illumination of our present condition any guidance for our judgments and policies, any guidance for any guard against the r- rebuffs of surprise and the vic- vicissitudes of change? Have you found such regular r- regularities in the sequence of past events that you can predict the future actions of mankind or the fate of states? Is it possible that after all history has no sense, that it teaches us nothing, <laughs> and that the immense past was only a weary rehearsal of the mistakes that the future is destined to make on a larger st- stage and scale? So he basically goes on and uh, and he says, you know, um, is it, you know, Just when, when you are a historian, mm-hmm. and a historian is like anyone who studies history or someone who who started the past or someone who, who really studies you know human nature at, at scale in a way so it's like you know the people that study the rise and fall of nations like i've i've read like the rise and fall of the roman empire a couple of times <coughs> just looking at the you know how powerful men can you know can go down in history and how nations can can rise to a point where you think oh they're never going to go down yeah and then you see a nation crumple and you see sort of you know the the human nature you know really becoming part of that cycle that our human nature sort of kicks in but the question that he's asking here is you know have you learned anything you know can we learn anything from history yeah yeah you know is 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 it repetitive or is it um is it just something that we watch and sort of move on with you know, with our lives and with our lives in a way. I mean, I think which is the big question you're talking about the people that have gone before us have learned from the experiences that they have they have gone through. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But instead of um, uh, you know this sort of new world of like you know TikTok and people living in the metaverse and all of that, does does history actually matter, or there's sort of a new a new formation of a new future that is not completely dependent on what happened in the past. So it's it, 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 so it is it is quite interesting how much we should take. What I'm saying is, you know, uh, how much we should take mm-hmm. from history and how much we should value 
from what happened before us. And um, so, I mean, I, I find this book very interesting. I've been, I've been reading it for for a while now. He says a whole lot of a whole lot of things about. Yeah, I think I think I, I, I like how how he starts how he starts the book. Um, I would really lo- love to just read it for myself and also get to entertain his ideas in terms of what what is there anything that you can actually get out of out of um, looking in the past. And uh, I think even when you you you're talking now, um, I was just seeing that um, it, sometimes it's it's hard for us to kind of like pick up um, mistakes or good things that other people did, yeah. Because time frames are not the same. Um, the way people think is not the same. Back in the days, uh, um, I, I don't know what the what are the medieval times, but the times where people were were living by a sword. And dying by a sword, yeah, like th- yeah. Th- those times were different, and the way things were being done there. Uh, if if we were in the Roman Empire now, uh, there would have been censored, and there would have been riots. There would have been so many things. Not that there were not riots then, but with us, we have uh, quote unquote human rights. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, so, you know, so like I mean, he, he talks about also the change of morality. Yes, I, th- I think that's yeah. why <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you know, like yeah, you know, yeah. like a lot of people forget, like you know, this um, this game we play called morality is 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 completely rooted in the present, the culture at the time, mm-hmm. and what is acceptable to society at at that at that time. So when you think about what is acceptable right now. And what people really do not accept right now, it's it's like, and you go back, you go back in history, and you know, y- you look at um, the sort of hunter gatherer uh, moment in history, where people would survive uh, because of muscle strength. So at that time, the people that were valued in society were the violent, the people that can be violent and go there and hunt. Mm-hmm. So hunters and people were violent, and people could kill at scale, were the people that were valued by society. Yeah. So society celebrated at that time the heroes of their time were people that could kill and murder at scale, mm-hmm. not just murdering to you know, protect their family from you know animals and all of that, but also murder to to feed their families. Mm-hmm. So people that were violent and physically strong were were valued at the time, mm-hmm. and then you move on from sort of your hunter gatherer stage, you move on to the next level, which is sort of the, the agricultural revolution mm-hmm. in a way. At that time, there were people that had a bit of, then you start talking about asset accumulation. Mm-hmm. So you get to a point where someone could, I- if you, if you let's say, were, were a hunter gatherer, you couldn't really accumulate assets in a way. Okay. Because the most valuable thing at the time is basically food. So what you basically have is is basically you you get the food which is meat which get rotten even if you get like foods they get rotten so you can really keep that in a bun. Mm-hmm. But the moment we went to the agricultural revolution, the game started changing. Mm-hmm. Something called surplus become part of the of the conversation yeah. where someone could farm more than others, and now this person could start selling to other people. Mm-hmm. And then now you need more tools. You need all of these things. And at that time, funny enough, the people that could were sexually active than other people were valued by society mm-hmm. at that time. Okay. Why? Because they could have more kids. When you have more kids, which means you can more labor. You can you have more labor. <laughs> 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 Talking about labor, you remind me of um, you know Dan Collins. Dan Collins. Um, um, uh, human resources. Human resources. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was that was something else. But anyways, you can just continue. <laughs> yeah. So 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 now you get a situation where the people that were valued in that society were people that were uh, sexually active because they could have more kids, and now they they could have um, a bit of more surplus, and those people became richer. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people were now expected to have as many kids as possible. As possible. Yeah. And it was acceptable at that time. Then you move on to that uh, uh, stage, you move on to the Industrial Revolution. Mm-hmm. The Industrial Revolution 
literally changed the game a lot. People who had some sort of, you know, intellect, intellect started being valued a bit more. Mm. People that could plan properly and build factories and do all of these things, it, we could understand mathematics and scaling, yeah. we understand engineering and all of these things. Yeah. They started being valued more at that time. So the kind of values that people had at that time really started changing. And you start seeing, um, you know, sort of machines taking over um, the work that slaves used to, used used to, to have. Do, yeah. And a lot of people think, okay, cool, you know, they changed, let's say, from slavery into, um, uh, so the abolition of slavery was purely because, you know, people just became better in their thinking. Mm. Uh, people forget that, you know, it's because people found someone else to do work. So, so you're saying <laughs> morality become <laughs> we can we can put it as sort of a more a moral decision, yeah, but yeah. it was more than just a moral decision. Okay, a, a big part of it was the way other means of achieving, you know, the end that was required at that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now we had machines. So the question becomes: I mean, if we have machines, you know, we can live without people really being. Our, our own machines oppressed yeah, yeah without oppressing other people mm-hmm. the same thing with using animals for like farming mm-hmm. people say t- people say oh you know it, it was maybe because um you know uh you know we care about uh, other animals mm. so much yeah, animal uh, rights, yeah. Uh, animal rights and all <laughs> of those things no it's just because we now we found, have we found ways we yeah. found other means mm. we found other means so <laughs> what I'm tr- what I've been thinking about for for a while now is you know is is sort of the progression in uh, in Change science modality, and yeah. engineering and innovation a big factor in the moral course in history mm-hmm. and that's a that's an open question that's yeah. a question that's open for discussion to say you know I- is it just about ideas that we value or is it about you know better means of survival and innovation being a great part of that story. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, I've always loved the way you you present stuff. Um, even if in, even if in a conversation like this, um, you literally just spark uh, my mind and then I just have uh, an avalanche of questions. <laughs> 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 and uh, I think one of, one of the things that you, as, as, as you were speaking, um, I moved from the 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 evolution of 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 morality through time yeah. and uh, and it also highlighted one of the things which i feel like um according to what we're talking about now is the involvement of i don't want to say money because money also uh, changed through time the we didn't have money like you were saying in the beginning yeah. and then there were the the way introduction of 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 money at some point, so with with morality, um, it's changing. Is it because of um, money? I want to use money, but as I was thinking of money, I was thinking uh, putting another word next to it: pride. Because uh, now people are now hoarding um, to, like you were saying, that the introduction of 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 uh, the industrial uh, what do you call this the industrial revolution, the industrial revolution yeah. it changed yeah, yeah, yeah. it changed uh, uh, people starting to say okay was it really a morality question where where people were saying that okay we're gonna now release the black people or who were slaves or now to say okay now we have another so we have something which can <laughs> replace the work right and you know a was it really morality? Was it really, was it money and slash pride? What 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 was it that that uh, that caused the the metamorphosis of of moral morality through the times? Yeah, so it's it's been like after I listened to sort of human resources by by Dan Carlin, I, I really started to think quite a lot because mm. you know one of the I mean. Dan Cullen, he doesn't he calls himself not a, a historian. He's not a historian, but, yeah, but uh, 
he sort of his presentation of history is better than most historians. So he's yeah. like very yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's a way that he presents history that's very that's very interesting. So just sort of listening to to him about sort of human resources and I mean, funny enough, we use this word every day proudly. Yeah. We every <laughs> company has a human resources mm. department, yeah. <laughs> and and w- when you and this is a you know a term that is coined in slavery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, this is the uh, you know the, the 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 term that was coined during that time that you know a, a, a human being is actually a a mm. resource. Yeah. That yeah. we can we can use mm. to accomplish um a specific you know um uh, goals mm-hmm. that we set. So if we are an organization, if we are a company, then we we want to achieve those goals, and there is no other way to achieve those goals um, uh, other than by using human labor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we we take human labor and we reward human labor in 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 some way. But y- y- you know, funny enough, you know, the a big part of the internet is trying to convince people that you know they should love their job. You know when 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 y- you know a lot of people actually don't mm. you know mm-hmm. but because they they have to survive because that's that's how the system has been set up mm-hmm. they have to survive and now they are re- uh, they now have to become a resource that can be used to achieve specific goals by um, by entities mm-hmm. okay the question is 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 it morally uh right um or should we just um, ma- make sure that, you know, until we get other resources to use, um, all the slaves should just be treated with dignity? <laughs> so this is... <laughs> This this is not fair to to humanity. <laughs> it's so it, okay. Yeah, we, yeah. If, if you think about it, which is yeah. the fight for unions, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That unions are there to fight that you know these resources mm-hmm. should be treated with some respect. You know, so unions are y- y- you know are for are for that. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. okay, that's one way to look at it. That's only one way to look at it. Mm. the human resources side the other way to look at it is to say um you know what's what's the best way and the quickest way to ensure that we don't need human resources uh to achieve our goals Mm -hmm. which is where we need you know sort of this either the combination of the man and the machine or actually the machine sort of driving uh the process um then you know, now we, d- we we technically, you know, don't need much of the human resources in a way. So, it's the question of morality is driven by uh, just discussions about people were saying, you know, we should do what's right for people, or is it driven by innovation and just making sure that we don't need this resor- human labor to achieve our goals. And my thinking is we need both. Mm-hmm. We need conversations around human freedoms while we are on a journey where machines can take over our Your labor. Our labor. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my thinking around the morality. You you cannot discard morality from you cannot separate mor- morality from innovation. So, so morality I- in in this case, right? Um, uh, are, w- are we speaking about that on in cases of 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 profit? Because I think it, it still comes back to like like I was saying that I, as, as you were speaking, I could see the the emergence of 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 whether you want to call it money or whatever. Uh, um. Is 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 morality being affected by the profits that people can get out of it? Because yes, we have 
both machines and humans, right? Yeah. Or human resources. Yeah. Right? And I don't want to bring the, ide- the the conversation of AI yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah, like it's yeah. too early. But we just <laughs> we might as well just start to, to exhaust. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, uh, I know I'm gonna bring some, another topic now, which yeah. uh, <laughs> is gonna be inter- very interesting for us to talk about bringing in purpose of each and every individual, right? Yeah, because now um, people will start asking themselves, so what is my purpose, and bringing the conversation we're talking about now purpose morality and the merging of 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 machines and human humans what do what do humans do now if most of the work is going to be done by machines okay so what will be the purpose of this human resource what will people what will be people what will be that world like yeah so I think the, you know, the, the, the idea of purpose, um, in a, in, a, in a bigger sense, is a, it's, it's misguided, and I mean, you and me had <laughs> I in, know. In a conversation, <laughs> in a conversation about <laughs> at some point. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. The idea of like what what purpose is, yeah, is is, you know, is a it's a traditional concept, which appeals to you know, uh, how people would, would want to feel about themselves to say, okay, cool, I'm, 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 I'm here for, for some specific reason. Um, and they're trying to find this, they're trying to find this reason, you know, as if, um, you know, the world is not, the world is not moving. They have to find that specific thing somewhere, but in a moving world. So, because the world is dynamic, the world is moving, mm-hmm. which means, okay, cool. Man, when I say man, the man or woman, man can, yeah. a person is mad uh, by his environment. We make our mark in our times. We make our mark in our times. Mm-hmm. So Winston Churchill was mad by war. Napoleon was mad by World War. By war, yeah, yeah. These these different great men and women in in history were mad by responding to their the times. The times, yeah. Uh, when you said that, I just thought of Il- Elon Musk as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, Bill Gates. Exactly. You, them, yeah. you, you think about Bill Gates. Mm-hmm. The time, it seemed as if there was some sort of convergence of everything happening in their environment that it was just the right time for them to move and act in that direction. Yeah. So these are men and women who sort of who really had a good sense of what was going on in their world and they stepped in appropriately to become either the voice of their time. I mean, you look at, look, let's look at someone like Zelensky mm-hmm. of Ukraine. Right now, there is, you know, this war between Ukraine and, 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 um, and Russia. Russia yeah. And Zelensky is there. This guy used to be a comedian. Mm-hmm. Then he became president. And now he gets there, and now he is everyone's hero all over the world. What made him a hero is the right response to his time, mm. to what's going on around in his world at that moment. Yeah. So a person cannot be a person outside the experiences of his time in that moment. Mm-hmm. So one of the key things, instead of uh, looking for some arbitrary purpose that's out there in the world, it might be even more important to be attentive to what's going on in the world, mm-hmm. in your own world, in my own world, yeah, and be able to actually re- react and respond accordingly to the time. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is, is, is I don't think someone is born to um, be specific. a specific thing, mm-hmm. but I think someone is born 
I and grow us in an environment that is equipped with some tools and knowledge and wisdom and all of that to react in a certain way um, when circumstances in life that is relevant, thrown, that is relevant for that time. Yeah, that's relevant for that time. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, which is which is what I think the idea of purpose itself is is, is a traditional concept which doesn't really um, apply doesn't apply in real life. Okay, so so they they they. Are I like how you broke it down in terms of the different times. Um, so, uh, to bring in uh, supernatural things now, right? Because uh, I've had a lot of people lately who are becoming uh, African healers or sangomas to in, in the context of South Africans, right? They will always say that uh, um, I got a calling. And usually, most of the time, it's it's when either things are really bad, yeah. and and they start having like some funny dreams, and people call in them, and then voila, now they have to go through the the whole initiation and stuff, right? Yeah. And also bringing up things like um, uh, on the on the Christian side of things, someone will say that um, I don't know. Ever since I was young, I've always felt like I was set apart right to 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 do this work right and that they because um, I have this thing to say that life always makes sense in in hindsight right yeah uh, so they are they are they're calculating everything that has occurred to them and say that no um, uh, this is what I've I feel like okay this is what I'm called for or this is what my purpose is how then now do we do we do we answer these people on the on a spiritual level to say because uh, I think um, the world we're living in uh, is is spiritual. There are yeah. things which are we we are not aware of when we don't know them, and then in that case, then how do we put the responding responding to time? Uh, for people who are saying that, okay, um, I will not necessarily be a, a person who's doing war, because you see, even with the Vikings, they always had people who uh, they always had to go consult some guy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the yeah, corner, yeah, and then yeah, like yeah. Yeah, they tell you that, okay, you guys, uh, kill your son, yeah. uh, that's the only way you're gonna win this war. But if you don't kill your son, uh, you, you're actually going to lose. And uh, some of them is true, some of them is not true. So how do we respond to say that, okay, in in looking at time? How do we now correlate this part where they're saying that, okay, this is what I'm here for on a spiritual level? I think it's, you know, the, the, the question of this is, this is what, this is what I'm here. That was, this is what I'm here for. It is, um, it's a safe place to be, you know, to, to be, here for this one thing and you just woke up and you just found it and you just go for it and um that's that sounds very beautiful but you know reality generally doesn't actually work like that mm -hmm. Re reality is full of like big surprises like you know covid and all of these things that just you know creep on people and um even you have an individual life where you go through like some, you know, terrible things that you never thought you'd go through or where you go through some big breaks that even you are surprised that, oh, you know, I never thought I could, you know, get this make big opportunity in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so the question of this is, you know, what I'm here for, I don't think it's, 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 it's as much relevant uh, than you know, whatever, if that makes the person feel better, that this is what they're, what they're here for, then that's great. They, they should feel better, but let's talk about what the, the thing they're here for is. Is it answering to the questions of the time or the questions of the future? Mm. Is it making life better? That is the bigger question. Mm. Whether um, uh, that person feels like it's a calling or whether that person feels like is something that they do for fun it doesn't matter what ma what actually matters is whatever that person really you know uh, is 
factory is it actually really is it is it important for now uh and you know is it is, is it is it is it is it adding to human freedoms and you know human happiness is it doing that is it adding to um you know they our understanding of how the world works mm. and and uh you know the consciousness of the civilization as a whole is it is it is it adding something in that in that sense whether on a bigger scale or on a smaller scale but is it actually adding something that is a real conversation mm. so the conversation really becomes of you know um not much why we do things as much as that is important but more you know you know what exactly are we doing mm -hmm. like someone can absolutely believe that you know what they are called for is to you know pick leaves under a tree or to to do to do something you know uh that's not valuable to other people mm -hmm. or our world then whether they are called to do that or they're not called to do that it's that's that's not relevant what's actually relevant is whatever they claim they're called to do is it actually adding um you know value yeah um yeah. to other people or uh, or to the world mm. in a way mm. so i think there has to be really um you know a big conversation around um you know what are they you know what's the pain in the world um um you know what is the the possibility of like happiness the uh, maximizing happiness of other people in the world mm. or what's the potential are there to to make that happen and you know how do every individual play a part you know in this whole you know in this whole game that you know we're in here and you know the the sort of biggest contributors um which which is another story that I'm going to chat to you later on but it's really like another you know like history is history is like a when we look back it's like um you have these big players mm. and you have uh you know some ponies in you know in that game <laughs> and the ponies that are in the game they're giving feedback to the big players to to play the game the kings and queens <laughs> better, <laughs> you know yeah. in, in a way yeah yeah you know, but the, I, 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 the issue is, yeah, how, what exactly uh, are we doing to make life better? What are the pains in the world? What are the opportunities to maximize human happiness? Mm. I think that is really the conversation. Uh, I think I like that. I like that a lot. Um, there's th one of the things that I actually, um, uh, concerning purpose, um, um, there are a few people that I actually agree with, uh, or rather, <coughs> excuse me. There are few people that I actually like aligning my 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 philosophy with, and uh, at the moment um, I think I have my big three, and uh, um, you, Pastor Mto, Jordan Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like my, my big three. So so in in a sense I like I like what Jordan Peterson says with uh, in according to purpose. He says. Um, cause purpose, purpose, you have to know yourself to, to just to bring the, the idea of purpose. And then he says, but you're too complex to know yourself. You can't really figure yourself out. And he continues to say that, but what you can do is like you were, you were saying, uh, to say that you might, you can find yourself within the time with the time that you're in and start start doing something so when you start doing something what that does is you kind of like pivot in in a direction which uh let's say for example i'll give an example with the with yeah. the podcast yeah yeah um I, I know we talked about the podcast but it's one of the things when i, th when I thought okay yeah um so he said do some start doing something uh, i was started doing the podcast and i realized okay um it's as i'm as i was doing the podcast I realized that there's there's need for me to start adjusting and changing, and then that adjusting and changing, I in a sense, is it's it's making the podcast becoming much better, and it's making giving me feedback to yeah. kind of like know, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I, you don't like doing this, so I, I start removing that out of 
my way. And let's say, for example, uh, I, ju- I don't even want to say this is set on concrete. Let's say, it, for example, podcast is not really my thing. Um, it can change to say, okay, now I'm going to start having uh, musicians on the podcast. And then it's yep. it's it's how it's how you when you're when you're on this path to to not necessarily purpose it's it's not purpose but you're on a path but when you're on this path you get you start getting feedback which allows you to kind of like pivot in a way that you are you can have the highest output yeah from your life so i uh, i uh, uh, I, I I like it in a sense that it, it's 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 kind of like answering what you were saying. No, like no, no, I, I actually like how you how you're putting it. Yeah. To say you know you, um, you're sort of mad, uh, you know I say you, you're sort of mad by by your time. Mm. Uh, it means you you, you know, with sort of the resources that you have, with the gifts that you have, mm. you know, you you put out you know signals in the world. Mm-hmm. And then your world responds to you, um, and you know you start you start course correcting, mm-hmm. but you sort of you, you actually learn the workings of your own mind by by doing. You actually have to do something. Mm-hmm. You actually have to start moving. So that the yes. moment you actually start moving in a certain direction, you you somehow realize what your strengths are, what you are good at, and what's um, what you are capable of. I mean, it, it, it is a question of is it, you know, is it is it fundamental in genes that some people are good at something and some people are not good at something? Mm-hmm. Um, a, a leader's made or <laughs> <laughs> you know, born. <laughs> you know, a leader is actually mad or a yeah. leader is actually born. Sure, um, sure. Or um, you know, I, is it is it is it is it some function of um, our society? How we how we actually grew up? Um, or is it both? And I- and I think it's both. Yeah, that is sort of uh, what they call nature and and um, and nature. So it's basically those two things. Mm-hmm. That is basically our environment that actually shapes us. But there is also we cannot deny the contribution of like some uh, some genes, you know, in you know, in this game. Mm-hmm. Like there there they are genes that are responsible for specific things, and some people are. Um, are more uh, lean towards a certain, you know, area than than others. Mm-hmm. What contribution that is to the final outcome of who what that person becomes in life? I think it is it is a combination of of those two. But how do you figure out the workings of your own mind? Because ultimately, you have to. Um, you know, it's like a Woodrow Wilson's favorite book, like one of my favorite books, like a small book called. Uh, you know, when a man comes to himself, mm-hmm. right? When a man comes to himself, it's, it, it, you know, it is, it is, you know, it is when a man gets tested, you know, by his environment. Yeah. You know, he, he, he gets tested by his world. He puts, uh, he puts all ideas in the world and he's so bold and he thinks he's so right. Mm-hmm. He's the hero. He's, he's, <laughs> he, he is a hero. Mm-hmm. Like everybody thinks like, you know, I, I know one of these moments where I'm like, <laughs> I think about something, mm. and when I say it, I'm like, ah, it sounded better in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should just stay there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, it, it sounded better in my head. Mm, mm. And that's how most things are. Mm. Like, you think in your head, and you're like, okay, look, you know, this is the best idea that I've ever had. I'm, I'm born to do this. I'm going to go for it. And a lot of people make the mistake that they actually don't test it with, um, they don't test their ideas and they don't test their, you know, what they think is a big vision with the world. But the next thing you do is once you have a good idea or you think you're born to do that or whatnot, test that with, with the world. With the world, yeah. Once you test that with the world, look at the world as... Um, the model. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You, you're sort of building. You, you're you're building this model mm. for your own existence in this whole landscape. You're you're building your, your model. So you're giving, you know, sort of this signal out, and you're getting the feedback. I think I think that's where the the 
the introduction of human resources becomes very much important um, in a sense that um, the people who respond it's it's not machines it's it's the human resources people we're talking about come bringing back to the yeah, conversation yeah, we're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. Like like you were saying that the, the the model we when you put that model out, when you test it, you have to test it using the human resources. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you actually have to test it using. Yeah. You, have, you have tested using using other people, so you basically test it using other people, and you and you have to trust that the feedback that you are getting from your environment um, is you might not agree with that feedback objectively. But it is definitely the true state of things at that at the time that you are living you are living in. Mm. If ninety nine percent of the world are saying you are wrong, you are most likely wrong. You have to change. You have to change your idea. I, I I really like I like the direction that we are going with our conversation, right? Because uh, from the beginning when you were start we were talking, um, the the there were things which were taboo in our in our society, right? And 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 now the people are starting to have um, conversation around it, and uh, uh, this is like a, a conversation when you talk, you have to walk on eggshells, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, and I'm sure and I'm sure people uh, already come from conversations <laughs> like that. That, that, that. I'm like, yeah. So you know, so even me now, as yeah. I'm speaking, I'm also trying to yeah to like like like, like you know this. Um, what I'm going to say right now doesn't represent my own ideas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So who's, so who's the idea that you <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you see, so 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 bringing the the idea of <laughs> of, um, of 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 um, um, is it LGBT? Yeah, yeah, your yeah, business uh, plus. Uh, yeah, plus the community, right? So, are we going there now? It looks like we're going there, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and. Um, and and t- to be honest, this this is literally we. I think most people have tried to educate themselves as much as possible. Yeah. And uh, there are people who have their own. Um, uh, what's the way? Um, people have their own stance, which yeah. they don't want to move on it. And and there's a way which is which is the world is also moving as well, right? And looking at that, the that that move of of. Um, uh, of of the world, per se, right? Yeah. So, I- in terms of morality and uh, how d- how do we introduce this part? Um, because it, it at a point it was it was not something which, in in a certain time, it was not something that you can you can just talk about it the way it's been talked about it now. Yeah. What what could have been the the genesis of it? Yeah. And where we are now to say that, okay th- what's the genesis of 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 this conversation um uh, p- people who can bring up that conversation wh- which one came first was yeah. it an egg or or the chicken yeah. right so what was what was what what is what was the the genesis of of all this kind of situations where because um, most of the time when you when you listen to it it's always always usually i am in a wrong vehicle yeah Th- this vehicle is not taking me I, I don't feel like i'm going the right direct destination so was where w- where where is it stemming from yeah i mean we can we, we can okay let, let's take time to play let's play around with with, with a couple of ideas here mm-hmm. so okay let's play around with um with um a couple of ideas. Let's let's put them out there, right? Okay, sure. So, I- the first one would be, you know, um, uh, you know, people born, um, like that. Like, are y- are, are you born, um, uh, gay or lesbian, or are you born, um, um, yeah, or are you born with, uh, with are you born on the fence? Are you born on the other side? Or are you born on on the other side? Okay, cool. That's that's one part. At what point would you tell that you are A or B? 
it is a question of okay cool just okay cool you know um should we tell our kids when they're like in grade one you are a you're not a boy or a girl you're in the middle right mm. we can decide later you know who you are and or who you want to be yeah in a way so there's are two ideas you know are you born like that is it nature um the third question is and and if you, if and if if you're born like that at what point do you do you, do you actually become aware of your 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 sexual orientation mm-hmm. you know uh, are you a or b and stuff like that that's that's one part the second part is um you know is is it something that you know becomes acceptable because society accepts it and now you know because other people are accept is this part is it part of the culture is it a cultural move and a cultural phenomenon that's another way to another way to look at it mm-hmm. and if it's a cultural phenomenon how do we you know how do we look at it mm-hmm. um do, do, do we take it because the culture that i'm living in at that time mm. takes it or do we fight it as as a taboo in the culture okay cool if people are not born like that then is it a sickness if people absolutely feel that they are their orientation is on the other side are they sick if they're sick should you cure them or should we learn to live with them mm. Okay, cool. If they're sick, are they happy with their sickness? And if they're happy with their sickness, should we bother about that? So it's sort of all these ideas that I'm putting out there mm. in the air just for you know, for a lot of people to, to actually think about it very strongly because I- if you are a parent, you're probably gonna be you got married, you're probably gonna be a parent at some point mm-hmm. and y- this are this are sort of some questions that you're going to deliberate with actually think about very strongly yeah that you know how do i you know how do i look at my child and what do i teach my child what conversations should i have with with my child Mm. what conversation should i not have with my child i I remember one of uh, one of our conversation you you said um it's a shepherd where it where a very small uh it was civilization yeah yeah yeah, yeah we're very we're, we're very young in the, in our civilization yeah and uh we kind of like trying to to discover ourselves there's a lot of things that we have not discovered about ourselves and um at the moment there are many balls in the air and we have not cemented many things at the moment and uh, I guess that would be um, slash my stance as well uh, on the on the conversation on on this many questions to say that uh, yeah, but you you're gonna have y- y- at some point you're gonna have to make a decision y- at some point where you are living yes. you have to make a decision. That so how do you make that's, mm-hmm. that's the big question. Yes, right I think now. I think like like you're saying to say that now because the thing is the the the, uh, the world or this civilization is is it's it's being put in a place where they have to make a very st- they have to make a stance and this 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 conversation is it's not as difficult because um it 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 let me put it in this way it 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 fights with the quote unquote the stance of biology right because someone just said okay the the biology of 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 humankind whether yeah. it be from the beginning uh, because i mean like right now even pe- people are doing uh, transitions right from yeah. from from one vehicle to another that they identify with right yeah 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 so even with that the the world has known it to be like that yeah right so now the the people are saying that no, um, the place that we're in now, it's very difficult for us to sit down and put our stance on this. But it seems like you have to make a stance now. 
and it, 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 and you know the it, it, the question uh, of okay cool you uh, someone has to um you know has to make a stance it's it's a, it's, it's a very it's a very difficult place to to put someone to say you know y you have ah, i've had a, a lot of conversations with people that are either on on the other side and they have you know or they want to change um you know who they are in that way they don't they don't want to be called male they want to be called female all right or they don't want to be called female they want to be called male mm -hmm. right I've, I've had conversations with people about that and you know it's it, it is such a difficult conversation that you know, you have this conversation, and I don't think the role of the listener is to understand what's going on. But believe this person when they tell you, <laughs> you know, they're going through something. Okay, okay. You know, this is like a whole mystery that we're going through. Like we're saying, this civilization is very, it's extremely young. Mm. And what we're going through we might it's, it's very it's a lot of pride for someone to stand in a position to say i understand everything yeah and what you are saying is not what you are feeling this person is standing in front of you you think this person is male and this person tells you everything about me says i'm female mm -hmm. and you say i don't understand you but I believe you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't understand you. But I believe what you're saying. Mm. Because these are very tricky, are, are very, very tricky times. Yeah. And, you know, more importantly, the aspects of our life that we remember are not, you know, this fights about, you know, this person was male or female. The fights that people that I know that, I remember are people that might not have fully understood what I was telling them, but they believed me. When I said I was going through something, they believed that I was really going through something. This was, I was going through some terrible stuff. Mm -hmm. Think about standing against a whole culture that doesn't accept what you feel exactly you are I don't for once think that a person getting there like changing their whole body to become someone else that person is just playing a game I think this person is going through something I might not fully understand what this person going is going through but I, I want to believe that they're going through something how is how how we solve it if it's if it's a problem that's a different discussion but that's a discussion they have to be willing to have if they want to have this conversation. Mm. And I think I, I like I like how you're putting it because um, you see it it introduces because the conversation is very technical. Like literally, it can be technical, <laughs> it can be psychological, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can yeah, be yeah. all sorts, right? And I think it's it's also the bedrock of yeah the way society works, in a sense. Right, um, should should society be driven on the stance of? Because from the beginning, it has always been driven on the stance of male, female, right? Yeah. So now we are bringing um, in between, right? And society now it it it's trying to that transition. From 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 for each and every conversation to understand okay what what's really happening, so now the society is 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 like I was saying that it's very important in terms of how do we move on from here yeah and, and, and when I say male male and female I, mm. I want you to, to to put this across that when I say male or female I'm I'm mm. not I'm not talking about uh, male or female in sense from gender mm -hmm. I think I think there are two genders. Mm. Uh, is gonna get me in trouble, but I think there are two genders. Yeah. There's male and there's female. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sexual preferences and sexual orientation might be different. 
Okay. And that might have to do with biology, the makeup of your hormones and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that you, you might lean sexually for in this direction, in that direction, in that direction. That can, that can vary. But you can still be a male. Or female, yeah. A, a male and a female, and you can identify as that, but identify sexually in a very different, uh, uh, in a very different sense, yeah. in a way. So when that person is in that position where they are born a certain way from how we look at them, mm -hmm. uh, their biology might be completely different. Um, you know, they might have a different preference in a way. Mm -hmm. um, what what should we do to this person? Should we crucify this person because they feel that way? It's like back in the day, like other cultures back in the day used to yeah, it was kill terrible, these terrible people, in that way, it was murder these people. Mm -hmm. And some some of today we might not actually murder them directly. We might um, uh, really get to you know put them down with our words. And most of them live their lives without confidence to go out there. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of them, you know, commit suicide. Talk about mental health. Yeah. Which is why I really think it is, society has to be more about, I don't really understand what you're going through, but I believe what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. What do you think we should do about this? Yeah, are I think. Are you happy with where you are? And that goes to the value that we should, the, the sort of, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 the virtue that we should value most is freedom, is personal freedom. That when we go even to say, okay, cool, we're legalizing this whole process, how do we legalize that? Is it infringing on this person's freedom to be who they feel they will be happy if they are? Or, you know, are we, um, um, are we, you know, Ensuring that their value system and who they are, their happiness is 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 increased. And our goal has to be to say, okay, cool. What increases the freedoms of individual uh, for them to act in a way that doesn't infringe on other people's freedoms, of course. So if it doesn't infringe on other people's freedom, then they should be in a position to make that decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. And our role as friends community as leaders most of the time is to say like I don't I don't you know I don't understand you fully if you really don't understand fully mm -hmm. and this really comes to you know what I've been what I've been thinking about quite strongly lately mm -hmm. is you know as much as we have this whole idea of empathy like there's there's a year that I was like is my year of like really thinking more deeply about empathy and how mm. to be in other people's shoes and all of that. But yep. there are limitations to really feeling what other people actually feel. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very looking forward to um, a point where, you know, technology can get us to a point where, and that speaks to consciousness, right? It, it is a subjective feeling. You have this whole subjective experience that you are having mm -hmm. in your own body. And if you can at some point you know, project that full experience to a member of parliament to say when you make this decision, this is how I'm feeling. Mm. It's interesting because uh, I think um, looking at how people want to go to, they want to get to a point where they communicate using thoughts. I think, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, which, which is Joe Rogan and Elon, Elon Musk, you know, <laughs> which, which is more telepathy, but but thoughts are incredible. But I think the actual feeling of what exactly I'm actually going through mm. is, 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 is a very different conversation, yeah. I, I remember one day I was like in bed and I'm like, um, I'm thinking about something very strong and I'm turning around, you know, I can't sleep, so I'm turning this side. Mm -hmm. I'm telling that side, I'm yeah. telling that side, I'm telling that side. I'm like, even if I tell someone what's going through my head, I don't even understand what's going through my head right now. Mm -hmm. All I know that is this thing is making me not sleep. I'm telling the side, side, side. I'm I, tr I try to calm my mind. Mm -hmm. Tell my mind like, okay, objectively, what are you worried about? And it doesn't work <laughs> until you sleep. Yeah, yeah. It's like your mind is in a world of its own. Mm -hmm. And there are 
legitimate we, we have to speak about like mental health as well yeah you know there are a lot of people that are going through this whole phase where they they are not understood they're in a position where no one gets them and they feel that people don't actually get them and the most difficult thing is when people are actually projecting their thinking and their ideas onto you as an individual mm. and now you are stuck because you know exactly the position that you are in and these people are trying to convince you not only that you are not feeling that way mm. but that you are wrong <laughs> if you are feeling that <laughs> way <laughs> yeah I, uh, I i love i love the the way you painted the picture it's uh it's 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 really it's really um, the reason why i was bringing up this conversation is because it's 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 one of the major conversations that are happening now and uh, not only we can try to understand we can try to to get it but i feel like most of us even the community does not um really have a full grasp of what's really happening yeah. right because uh, even within the community there's um difference in opinions and and all those stuff yeah yeah and uh, i just like how how the empathy part of part, part of the conversation has to come in and to say okay this is how this is happening and whether whatever stance that you're in because at, at the end of the day actually when you have a conversation um, i have a conversation with uh, some few people who i know uh, who are in the community and you realize that okay this is a human being we're having a we can have a normal human being interaction yeah. just that they like you were saying there's something which is happening in them which uh, if if you the, you you were to project if they were to project how they were feeling and they actually see um uh, feeling sad when you have distance concerning how they feel e, 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 yeah and it they, they, they don't, don't get me wrong there's also there's also a cultural element to it okay it's, it's not it's not just one sided Okay. There's also a cultural element to it. And I mean, the, 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 yeah. Even even with the cultural, because the moment you bring culture, it's culture is very much straightforward. Uh, from like I was saying in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, and uh, I've I've never had or l l at, at this point as we're speaking yeah. on the fifth of July, twenty twenty one. Right. Yeah. I haven't heard of a culture which has uh, which is accommodated accommodated in no, no no i'm not talking about historical culture i'm oh, talking okay. about there the, the, the is all of this which we, we don't fully understand where it is now but there's also like a a whole formation of now when when we become a group of people okay we we develop um s certain ways of navigating society mm -hmm. so you 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 would get like let's say other people were like um lesbian or gay or stuff that they they overdo that and i'm not a big fan of that overdoing Okay. Okay. Right? Like yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. But understand, it's a way of navigating. In nav the culture. Navigating the world because you need one thing. One one difficulty that you you, you get into when you have community of people that are maybe minorities. You know, you are you are minorities. So a group of people that are just different from other people. Mm -hmm. You need to develop a way of living the slightly different from other people mm -hmm. for basic reasons like identification which speaks to protection and stuff like that like you, you you know you need other people to see oh that's you know that's that's my people that's that some people dress differently because um they want to be identified with that group mm -hmm. and you also get you know that sort of aspect as a way you know um uh, some people in this community start acting a certain way in a way, and you see that broadly, it's not all of them, but some start acting in a certain way, which is sort of a development of a of a different ways of n navigating this, but also ways of identification. You have to be identified as a certain people differently, mm. in mm. a way. Mm. Th does it have to be? Does it have to be that way? this is my opinion i might be completely wrong about this i think it's because it's the early days i think as 
it progresses, you realize that, you know, uh, people like that will more and more start acting normal as they get accepted in the world, act normal because they don't have to be identified by a specific way of operating in the world for them to uh, to survive, you know, y- 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 you know, in this system. So we're dealing with a whole lot of things that is like, okay, cool, I don't like, uh, I know you are that, but I don't like how you present it mm. to me. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think t- maybe to wrap up this conversation, um, uh, without saying this is your stance, this is my stance, but for me, my stance is we, which, which I also had to say that, okay, we are, a very young organization <laughs> civilization <laughs> we're a very young civilization which um we were trying to to understand how how it works uh, how this whole system works and i, I think in terms of um the the, the bringing back the morality because this is where it actually actually start, started from right yeah yeah, yeah we yeah. we brought we brought things like um the human resources moving on to money yeah. that oh, or, or, or um yes money moving on to money said so okay it seems like most of the, these things is like they're also being affected by money right so and also the point where we are now to say how do we relate with each other looking at the changes that are happening right and i mean I like the fact that there, there are many podcasts that are happening l- lately, and it, it. I think when when our great 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 children looking back at this video or with this audio, they will laugh at this. They, they will. They it will be. <laughs> you understand? You know, they'll, they'll, they'll be like these guys. Why? What are they talking why, about? Why? Why do you? Why? Why are you guys so lost? I mean, this is this is straightforward. In hindsight, right? Right. In, in hindsight, 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 yes. In hindsight, yeah. So yeah. in hindsight. This this would just be a it's to be black and white, yep. but for for now they they need to understand. Uh, I, I mean, if I'm sure this is gonna be my my great 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 children uh, looking at this and like, okay, what what are you thinking about here? But they need to understand that we are like you were saying that we are in this time period, and we are we are navigating and moving through this time. With this spec, yeah, or lenses, right? So, we we won't be able to see it as A and B. Yeah, some other people are ahead of their time, maybe, maybe not. But as we speak at the moment, this is not something that you can just um, switch on the light and say, "Okay, this is where I am," because um, they, they, there are so many um, repercussions. Rather, let me put it this way: there are so many repercussions that can stem out of this yeah uh, I, I, I mean you, you're right about it it's like you know should, should you be a conservative who says okay cool uh this is nonsense we're not going to accept this or should you be um liberal. Right, a liberal o- o- on the or on the other side to say okay cool let everyone just you know do what they want to do um and ignore that I, I, and i think the big uh the big part how we make history how we make life happen is we need um, both those extremes and we need both of them to be had to really come to the table to say, okay, cool, let's, let's, let's have, um, if we're going to have moral conversation, let's have a moral conversation about it. If we're having an intellectual conversation, let's have an intellectual conversation about it. Yeah. But let's not uh, cancel each other out. Let's have these conversations and let's discuss about it. And this sort of this battle of ideas you know this sort of tension push and pull is what make society work would would you think would you say that the the idea of human resources the way that we're talking about human resources that transition is the same transition that we are in at the moment remember when when different uh, civilizations started not seeing Black human beings as human resources to now seeing that okay this is we are 
uh, some of the some of the people I, I think I've once had someone who said that we can't really compare the two, but just to bring this conversation, you would you say that it's, it's a similar conversation like what is happening now to say that okay, that transition back then there were I, I know in some uh, American history there were states which um, the there there was there was freedom in certain states and other freedom no freedom in other states. Yeah. You feel like it's also the same similar conversation as well. Um, looking at that, yeah, th- I think it's a it's a similar conversation in 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 a in a lot of ways. Uh, firstly, because if 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 you think about um, you know talking about empathy, right? Um, yeah, b- black people should have recovered, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Black people should have recovered, man, from this. Mm. Why are we keeping on mourning? This thing happened a lot of years ago. Why are we still talking about this conversation? Sure. You don't understand me, ca- but can you believe me? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Right? Sure, sure. You know, can you believe me that, you know, even though I was not there when the police was doing what it was doing when I, s- I see the police I don't feel okay if I left my ID <laughs> it's a big problem right mm, mm. if I see the police I don't I don't uh, I, I don't feel alright mm. oh, I, I, but I don't understand you yes you don't have to understand me but can you believe me that has to be the beginning of the conversation tell me more about how you're feeling mm. Tell me more about how what you are going through. Mm-hmm. So the conversation has to be more about listening to the other side. Uh, I would, to be honest with you, I would, I, would, I would really love to to see this conversation resolved in my lifetime. It's it, it, it's it's very difficult now because you you actually have um, a sort of bit of um, really a bit of we're talking about uh, talk about polarization and uh, different extremes on the other side that you have one person that says I'm not going to listen to you about this at all then you have another person that says okay cool if you say that then then it's fine I'm not going to listen to you as well then you have all these both these extremes every person is on on the other end it's going to be extremely di- and the difficulty is you know how the human brain works so you hold a position. Once you hold a position, your brain instantly gets in a mode of protecting that position that you hold. Mm-hmm. That's the work that the brain is supposed to does instantly when you hold a position. Mm-hmm. So your brain is protect. Your brain thinks it's protecting you by protecting the idea that you hold. Mm-hmm. Because if you the idea that you hold becomes wrong or is 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 apparently becomes something that is wrong then you get hurt. So your brain is trying to protect you from feeling that way. Mm. And that is a feature of the brain. The moment you hold you hold a position, your brain gets in this mode, protecting that idea. But it gets even better. So it gets in protecting that idea to say, okay, cool, I hold on to say this idea because this idea uh, is part of my identity of who I am mm. in a way. But it gets even better where the next level that the brain switches in is completely blocking out and filtering any sort of idea that goes against this idea. This idea, yeah. So that's a, that's a, a, com- a, a bigger development. So when you say something, you say, I mean, you have a wife now, so you'd know this. Mm. Uh, where were you? Um... I was, um, uh, I, I left the office and uh, I, you know, I had to go see a friend and all of that. Um, oh, so which means you don't want to spend time with me anymore. <laughs> no, I did not say that. Mm. Mm. I did not say that. Mm. <laughs> no, but that's what you say. <laughs> <coughs> no, that's not what I say. But what, what the brain starts to do is once it holds a position and idea, it yeah. starts filtering information. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. hear what is actually being said. Mm-hmm. And that's a very silly example, but that happens in real life. Yeah, true. You wonder, when you, t- when you tell people, you think, um, 
you know, it's like, I mean, there was this big experiment that was done. It's actually a, a true story that was done so yeah. uh, um, uh, back in the day where you had uh, this massive prophet was telling people the world is going to end. And he brought all the people. People left their jobs. The smart people, intelligent people left their job to say, okay, cool, at, at 12 p.m. this day, we are, we are all going to be in one place and all going just to sit there and the world is going to end. We wait, yeah. We wait there. So people yeah. left their jobs when they get there uh, and they waited for 12. The papers were recording this. This, this group of people saying the world is going to end. And people in their homes thinking, oh, it might be right, you know, in a way. Let's go have our last supper, yeah. Right? 12, you hit. The world didn't end. The world didn't end. And the prophet was there, said, okay, cool, look, guys. You know what? The world didn't end. Why? Because of us. Right? We were the one that were obeying this. Yeah. And yeah. when we obeyed, everyone was saved because of us. Because of us. <laughs> what a ridiculous <laughs> argument. <right? laughs> what a ridiculous argument. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Okay, so what you would think is you get some smart people, some intelligent people that say, no, you give us information. Mm. If your information turns out to be incorrect information, can we discuss that first? Point one. Mm. Then we can talk all that, all, all the additional information that you're going to give me, you can give me later. Yeah. But let's have a discussion about the original information that you, you gave, gave me, here. which came out to be objectively incorrect. Mm -hmm. But people are, didn't do that. Even though the information that they were told turned out to be objectively produce negative opposite results mm -hmm. to what was said, they things went so wrong. Mm. But their affirmations, even their belief in that even got stronger. Okay. Can you explain that? Can you explain people that get walled in like ridiculous cults? Very smart people. Yeah. And you give them all the information saying, ah, this doesn't look right, man. Ah, it, no, what we, uh, it doesn't, doesn't sound like the right thing. Mm. Here in South Africa, people eat, eating grass in, in, some, <laughs> the, you know, in some places. Sure, how, sure. How, how do you explain that? Mm. And with it's, the, it's with the suit and the tie. Yeah, and if you think about it, it's, it's a deep psychological uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, situation mm -hmm. where you know, once you sort of step in your foot into you don't you, you don't sort of measure your 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 the depth mm -hmm. of a fountain by stepping a foot into it. No, you put a you put a stick into it. Put a stick. Yeah. The moment you put your foot into it, it's it's very unlikely that you'll get back. And one of my biggest fear on life is that psychological phenomenon. Mm. To be wrong and believe in my idea so much and get to a point where all the right ideas come to me will never change my mind. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm so scared about that. I don't want to believe something so much that I cannot change my mind about it. Mm. Being married to, a, to an idea. You cannot marry to an idea. And, and th that's how your brain works. Mm. You get an idea, your brain switches into a mode where it says protecting that idea, yeah. gu guarding that idea. Mm -hmm. This is your idea. Why? Because it's self-worth, it's self-value, and all of that. Your brain's responsibility is to make sure that you don't get into pain, protect mm -hmm. you. And once once it does that, then it starts filtering all the ideas. You start hearing things that you like only. Mm. Is is yeah. there a way of uh, a mechanism that you have to to kind of like uh, flush off? It's like a it's some form of reset. Uh, to say okay um you I don't, whether it be meditation or whatever you sit down with yourself it's like okay i think i'm i think i'm married to this kind of idea and some of the ideas could be toxic um not only to yourself or to other people is there a way that you kind of like find the point where okay this is one one two three it's actually the point where one two three is happening um do, do you have something like that so there's so there, 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 there a couple of ways to do it. So what I normally do from, I read a lot of books. So what I normally do is I read two books at a time. 
Okay. Book about Bitcoin. The book about all Bitcoins, all, all blockchains are scams. Okay, cool. <laughs> what, what are these guys saying? This guy sure, saying sure. Bitco- blo- Bitcoin is the future. One guy is saying all blockchains are? Well, it's a scam, bro. Are scams. I read both of them. Get these ideas. Get these ideas. Compare notes. What's going on here? So when whenever you have two conflicting ideas, mm-hmm. a lot of people normally just resign. It's easy to resign to one idea. Yeah, it's just easy to say, "Okay, cool. I'm going to resign to this. This is the this idea. I'm not going to be bothered about doing this." So whenever people, whenever normally people get in a situation where they have two ideas which are conflicting normally people don't start weighing those things and start looking at them together and all of that. Mm-hmm. They resign to to one idea. Which is a silly way of living in a, co- in a very complex world where a lot of things are playing with each other a lot of times. Yeah. So one, one way is to look at you know opposite things at, the, at a time. The other way is to be multidisciplinary mm-hmm. in your approach to life. Okay. Just learn all the big ideas in different disciplines. Learn something in science, learn something in philosophy, learn something in economics, you know, uh, learn something about history. Look at these big disciplines, learn the big ideas in the big disciplines. Most likely, all the, con- all the conflicts that you get in life fall into one of these disciplines. Yeah. Or... If it's a big explosion, mainly there's a fusion of these disciplines that's going on. Mm, and they call that is sort of a Lollapalooza effect. When mm-hmm. you have all these disciplines coming together, that's where it's a big company, it's a bill, like Coca-Cola mm. and Tesla and all of these things. There's a fusion. It's not just one thing that's going on there. Mm. It's a fusion of really big ideas that govern how human systems actually operate. So learn a lot in or the different disciplines. Yeah. And wherever there is a conflict between the ideas that you hold, don't run away. Work through them. It might take time. You may not get an a full answer, but work through the ideas. Yeah. Work work through them. Until you until you get to a point where you're like, okay, cool, I think you know this is uh, something that I can I can actually I can actually work with in mm-hmm. a way. So Look at op- opposing ideas, learn about different big ideas in the world. And one of the more important things is train your mind, train changing your mind often. Ch- change yeah. your mind often mm-hmm. and be comfortable with that feeling. Be comfortable with that feeling. The, I- the feeling that at one point, you knew you were so right. Yeah. And you're now at a point where you realize you were so wrong. How does that feel? It's the idea of first principles thinking. It's, it, it is that. That most, the first idea that comes into your head most of the time is completely wrong. <laughs> and you, you work through that. Mm. The pain of the emotional struggle of working of moving, through yeah. that process mm. of going through that process of intellectually looking at that idea from both sides and all of that you know it's like it's like you hold this thing and you're like and it's become part of you and now you are taking a part of you out of out of you in that sense mm-hmm. are you comfortable with that pain that intellectual struggle mm-hmm. so when you change your mind that's what happens and a lot of people don't want to do that so let me change your mind often and do that do that by um, uh, uh, you know uh, intentionally do that mm. you have an idea that you love and start asking other smart people about it be comfortable when they tell you that you're wrong yeah so I think the, the either I'm not saying I've found the model yet yeah but I think this is part of the model that sort of works yeah, I think I think it, uh, I, I like the the theme of our conversation there on this podcast is um, the the idea of morality and 
how uh, I think they were, I, uh, I remember I remember when I asked uh, when I said that we're gonna have a podcast. I only had one question, and that question is how does the world work? And I yeah, think we've yeah. done we've <laughs> done justice in terms of um, how does the world work? And uh, even at this point, I can say okay, um, this is this is how the world works. Um, in a sense, uh, looking at what uh, Jordan Peterson said to say that we are we are here participating in this in the direction of of where the world is going and i like how you started the conversation is things are just making working together now <laughs> yeah you started yeah, the conversation yeah. by saying that um do we learn anything from our past and and it seems like um th- it's very hard to grasp that uh, that point because yes we can learn but we some of the things we can't really uh, employ what um, this uh, Julius Caesar was doing in his the time in the past years yeah yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, can't yeah. apply it here because what we're dealing with now is not the same though we can extract some wisdom from it but it won't happen now and unfortunately. Um, even after our time, uh, whether it be AI, I yeah, remember, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. <laughs> when we were talking about <laughs> AI, <laughs> yeah. when AI is actually having a conversation with itself, uh, whether human beings will be totally eliminated, yeah. um, it will start asking itself, um, why were we created? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it, 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 yeah. it, it, it is it's actually very interesting, it, it, and, and I mean, I think which is, I mean, wha- one of one of the reasons, like when when we started talking about you 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 wanted to have a podcast and you yeah. wanted to do this, and um, you know, in my thinking at the time was, which is still my thinking now, that um, you know they. You know the the whole concept of having conversation. Um, most of the time, it's not coming to a definitive answer about how things work, but it's um, you know it's it is the process of sort of moving these uh, they call they call them you know no uh, they call them memes, mm. right? sort of this whole idea do ideas rule us or do we do do ideas have us or do mm. we have ideas mm-hmm. like do we actually have ideas or do ideas actually have us, yeah. have us? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and if you if you look at it you, you you kind of have you know these containers which are containers of information and you have this this information you, s- you seem to have this whole building up of layers of information and this whole it's like a system that's building itself and developing into a better and a better and a better system mm. over time yeah yeah so my thinking about it is the model that's being built at the moment across the world by ideas spread jumping from one container to the next is actually more important than the container itself so ideas are more are, are extremely important when they get better and when they help us you know answer a um, you know a bit more difficult questions about how our world works mm-hmm. and how civilization works and hopefully you know through the the struggle of our ideas at our time we get to develop those ideas and pass them on to the next generation they develop those ideas and they pass on to the next generation, they develop and they pass them to the next generation. I'm a big believer in, like Stephen Pinker wrote, you know, the whole book around the things, the better angels of our nature and um, uh, uh, 21st, uh, what's this book, 21st, uh, not lessons in the 20, 21st century, but th- th- there's a book that he wrote um, about enlightenment. Enlightenment mm-hmm. now is that your is that your quote enlightenment now? Yeah, and the whole idea is things are getting better. Mm-hmm. We are getting better. It's about science. It's about human freedoms. 
are getting better, your health, things are getting better. So just looking at that, we have all these ideas that we are building that were not acceptable back in the day, but I think we're actually getting better. And whether we are right, or whether you are right as an individual or you're wrong, that actually shouldn't matter. But whether you are part of building this incredible model that can work in yeah. the future mm -hmm. is more important. Mm -hmm. So what model are we building? What <laughs> model are we building? You see, it, it, I, li I like it because, you see, it, it makes it, that's why uh, we, we have preconceived ideas of how the world should work. And the, the changing of morality and the changing of how the world works will make it difficult for any civilization to have a handle on what is the meaning of life. I, th I, I, I think the idea is look, AI, AI systems will be way better at looking at this than, than us. If they don't fall in the same trap of, um, of uh, as in consciousness like us. The moment <laughs> they fall in that trap, then yeah. it becomes very difficult because now True. they have feelings. Now they have to protect themselves. Now that system works in the same way again than a, a same way that we are actually working. Mm. So if you have a system that doesn't value being uh, uh, wrong, the feeling of being wrong mm -hmm. than holding the truth. Then it's a whole different conversation. Okay. And how you feel about that information doesn't actually matter if, if that information is wrong. So what mm -hmm. you what you get on to do as an individual, as an agent in this system is look at, okay, cool, how can I be right? So which means right, because uh, bring, bringing in wrong How can right I have truth? How can I have truth? So, so truth, because the thing is, um, the, the truth, truth uh, for us, it will be gravity. Gravity is truth. Uh, do you, the only time gravity does it is not truth is when you introduce the laws of aerodynamics. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's truth. It's truth to a certain point. So yes. It, it, so, so looking so, at yeah. looking at how truth, um, not necessarily. I don't want to say truth is changing, but right or wrong is changing through time. Yeah. Uh, so which means you can only handle the truth of in, that time. In this moment. Yes. Right. Yes. But uh, but I think there there are some values that are, we they, are they are they universal truths? Yeah, yeah. There there are some values that we've established so far that actually work. Okay. Freedom works. For everybody, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any any person who says I don't want to be I don't want I don't want, I want to be free. Freedom works for everyone, mm -hmm. so let's amplify freedom. But to what extent? We need to cap it with some law, which which is which is like oh cool. Should if if you are free, then should you do what you like, mm -hmm. or should you be kept somehow by some rules and some regulations, guidelines, so that you don't walk over there? Mm -hmm. But freedom on the whole, is good. We know that. Things like... Um, um, we're, not, we're not under the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, but... Uh, so freedom, freedom is... Freedom is, is, actually, is actually a good thing, and we know mm -hmm. that. And if we get to a point where we can, we can sort of amplify um, things that allow other people, like things that we're talking about now, to say, okay, cool, we should... What should we do to the LGBT? Well, what not? Should we make laws against these people? What, sh what should we do to them and stuff like that? And a big part of it is to understand them, but a big part of it is to allow them to be free to express how they feel mm. about what they're feeling and all of that. We might not fully understand it, but we have to listen. And they have to be free to express themselves in that way, mm -hmm. in a way. So freedom is, is key. And mm -hmm. in you know, general, like really, it, it, it's sort of a universal. Universal love. love is, is, is somehow works. Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of it's one of the, the, the thing that works. Yeah, love, the works. truths. Yeah, it's, it's one of the truths, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it actually works. Mm -hmm. Being ensuring that you treat other people the same way that you want them to treat you, mm. um, it kind of works. It can, it kind of feels right. Mm -hmm. But uh, how do I know that's how you want to be treated? Becomes a whole different question again. Mm 
it's not it's not as oh if i need oranges then i should give everyone oranges mm. it, 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 there are things which make up this society which uh, could 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 be seen as truth like uh, love is very complex in terms of uh, it's it the 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 children or the, what the, the branches that come out of love <laughs> <laughs> like what exactly does yeah yeah yeah, it's, yeah yeah it's it's everything that comes out of there it's it's something which will benefit humanity yeah in general whether it be patience you cannot be patient if you don't have love yeah yeah whether it be faithfulness everything everything that comes if we start from the kicking point of love um the i like i like the fact that most people in different places in different spheres or what they believe in they come back to one thing love is their answer yeah and um i feel i feel our last podcast when we talked uh we we stopped here to say that as much as we have talked about all this fantastic stuff yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it comes yeah. back to one thing. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah. it, you know, it, it, it really comes. I think it, uh, yeah, it definitely comes to, you know, sort of love. You know, love is the answer, and the question mm. is, you know, how can, you know, how how can we spread all of these, um, ideas? How can we spread all of these? Um, uh, how can we have these conversations, uh, being guided by the people who say, you know, um, sort of is love is sort of love guiding sort of love, you know, love guiding this process in a way. And that's that's the timeless part. And the question about, you know, what is that? What is love? It just becomes very quite broad that you have to break it down into different compartments. Yes. So how do you how do you actually display it in um a in this specific aspect? But you know, sort of at the same time as well being able to to fight for what's right you know like love is not just being um being sort of a nice guy it's it's being able to when required fight for the justice and the freedoms of other people mm-hmm. and be stand there and be like fight for truth and fight for what's real and all of those things so that I- that is where all of those things become you know extremely you know, extremely, you know, extremely complex. But mm. I'm confident that we are on on a good path. I mean, we're talking about R. Kelly now, mm. being given, <laughs> <laughs> being given thirty, 30 years, being yeah. given thirty years. Yeah. Um, and you know, some people will be like, you know, um, is it is it? Uh, I had this joke. So there's uh, R. Kelly <laughs> and um, uh, what's this? Um, uh, Einstein, uh, uh, Weinstein, Weinstein. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Weinstein. Yeah, okay. They, what's the lady? His name? Uh, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. Okay. So I've Ghislaine, been, uh, Ghislaine yeah. Maxwell also got, uh, <laughs> also got. Oh, I think. Oh yes, yes, she also got a sentence yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, she also got a sentence. She also mm. got like twenty. Like I think twenty-seven. 20, like twenty, twenty something. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, and and they were like. Ugh, you know what? You know things don't change. Women are still getting getting less. <laughs> They're getting <than> less. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually heard it from Trevor Noah or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is this is like you know, but you know, all of those is setting up an example to say, that, okay, cool. If you move in a certain direction, you know, we are we're going to come after you, and when you know, no one is same thing that's happening in this country with the posters I've been watching with the, the, the whole <laughs> thing <laughs> yeah. and all of that. You know, if you do the wrong thing, you know, we, we definitely come up to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, love. So love love is the answer. answer. And uh, I think maybe just to just to throw this one this one in is um, I don't I know I have I've have, I've have said that there are three people that um, I I've place my views with and uh, I, I feel like it's also important to also mention this um um i also share my views with um our lord jesus christ he was uh i don't know what was the what is the meaning of the word maverick but i feel like he in his time and 
in this time, in this lifetime. He was a man who moved differently. And he was I feel like he was the embodiment of, of love. Yeah. And he is a true expression of love in, in terms of how looking at our how our environment is right now. He was able to walk in passion with someone who is seen as a harlot, but he he moved differently. <laughs> no, to, to, to navigate that, yes. we're talking about actual, actual navigation, <coughs> not navigate all the complexities. Yes, yes, I, I was just responding to what you were saying as well, to say that love is not just this nice guy. Uh, people would think Jesus Christ was just this nice guy, but yes, yes, he was a, a man who was moved by love, embodiment of love, uh, people who you would think he would be friends with since they are they are the pastors of their time the pharisees yeah. he was the one who was uh, bashing them and correcting them and uh, tax collectors he was the one who was sitting them so he wa- he was a man who could who could m- change yeah. seeing seeing all the expressions of love and we see even his his uh, he, he the reason why we're still talking about him even today, because he was a man who, who walked differently, and the the embodiment of love. For those who don't know the, 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 the theory or the 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 story behind the man Jesus Christ, uh, he, he kept on talking about his father, and uh, he said, "Me and my father are one," and the Bible says that God is love. And it, that's to to bring back in this conversation to say that I also look my views as yep. as as align them with what Jesus Christ was, and I think it's worth someone to align your your views with. And coming back to the the conversation of how do we best. See, since we're saying that the the answer is love, yeah. How do we now um, have the skill that he had to navigate through life, navigate the times? I mean, I think, uh, and I think that's <laughs> that, that's a very interesting conversation. I think it's a it's really around, you know, uh, w- there are people that are on the sidelines, and they want to become part of the conversations about what's actually happening in culture mm. at this moment. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it helps to to pick a side. I, I don't think it helps to be on the sidelines either, not to be part of the conversation. I think it helps to be really part of the conversations and really understand what's happening in, um, in the culture right now. So studying what's, what's happening in the world um, what you know uh, uh, makes people tick right now in these times I uh, you know the, the type the how people communicate in this time is is very important um, you know the old ways don't work anymore mm. you know we're sort of in a different time and great men and great women are mad by their time yeah <laughs> thank you very much mr maze uh i feel like this was uh, uh it 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 adds to to the to this vehicle that's moving um this this conversation adds to the v- this vehicle that's moving uh, in this time and um yeah, we're going to talk about engineering and AI. Yeah, we thought we were going to talk about this. business <laughs> and all of those things. So we end up talking about culture. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, I feel like I feel like uh, looking back, um, we will we will we will s- we will decipher in terms of this is where we were in in this time and you know whatever time that we're going to be looking back, we'll be like, okay, yeah, it looks like we 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 missed it because it's like like we said like life always makes sense sense in hindsight whether we missed it or we got it right and it's always nice when you get it right in this time so you know that you you were ahead of your time <laughs> in yeah. a sense can I, can, I, can I read something then we yeah, can sure. then we can call it um 
here uh it's also from this book that i'm reading here lessons um lessons of history yeah um so um okay here the initiative individual the great man the hero the genius regains his place as a formative force in history he is not quite the god that Carlyle described he grows out of his time and land and is the product and symbol of his lands as well as their agent and voice without some situation requiring a new response his new ideas will be untimely and impract impractic impractical when he is a hero of action the demands of his position and exaltation of crisis develop and inflate him to such magnitude and powers as would in normal times have remained potentially untapped but he is not merely an effect events take place through him as well as around him his ideas and decisions enter vitally into the course of history at times his eloquence like churchill's may be worth a thousand regiments his foresight in strategy and tactics like napoleon may win battles and campaigns in established states if he is a prophet like mohammed wise in the means of inspiring man his ways may raise a poor and disadvantaged people to an unpremeditated ambitions and surprising power a pasture a moss an edison a ford a right a max a lenin a mouse tongue are effects of numberless causes and causes of endless effects <laughs> thank you shepherd <laughs> That is a wrap. Um, sitting down to talk about the, what you just read is another <laughs> podcast. But yeah, thank you very much for listening to this conversation. Uh, that was uh, Mr. Maze, uh, the tech, tech, is it the tech king? Techno king. Techno king. <laughs> All right. Uh, have a wonderful night.